At the moment Abraham Lincoln died from an assassin's bullet, Secretary of War Edwin Stanton reportedly said, now he belongs to the ages. Lincoln's death did not mark the end of his story. Almost immediately, people began to interpret the ultimate meaning of his life. In cities throughout the nation, people mourned. Ministers offered eulogies and all struggled to make sense of what had just happened. In that search for meaning, some scoured the countryside in Kentucky and Indiana looking for evidence of Lincoln in the places where Lincoln lived as a child and young man. In Illinois, the place where he lived and worked took on a new meaning. In Washington, D.C., the White House, U.S. Capitol, and even Ford's Theater, the place where Lincoln was assassinated, were draped in mourning. All were photographed countless times. Along with looking at the places where Lincoln walked, people looked to Lincoln's words for solace and comfort. Even in death, people looked to Lincoln for inspiration. We still do. As a nation, we often check our progress against Lincoln's vision. We want to do right by a man who sacrificed everything to keep the Union together and the spirit of freedom alive. Lincoln said as much to Congress on July 4th, 1861. It is a struggle for maintaining in the world that form and substance of government whose leading object is to elevate the condition of men, to lift artificial weights from all shoulders, to clear the paths of laudable pursuit for all, to afford all an unfettered start and a fair chance in the race of life. It is our privilege and honor on the 150th anniversary of the end of the American Civil War to introduce to you Abraham Lincoln. Listen to what he has to say. What you hear is taken from Lincoln's actual words, words that convey hope for his country, for our country, for his story, and for our story. Ladies and gentlemen, Abraham Lincoln. I am particularly pleased to have this opportunity to be with you today and to say a few things regarding the future. The time and effort that went into uh, putting this together and executing it um, was tremendous. The, the amount of hours that we put in solely from thinking about it and brainstorming and researching and planning for it to the execution of the, the journey, um, I thought it was absolutely fabulous. Just being able to um, see people's reaction and um, connection to Lincoln has been tremendous over this time period. I think the Park Service made the right decision in not exclusively focusing on the funeral, but also focusing on Lincoln's life and his legacy by having Fritz portray Lincoln and give the American people an opportunity to understand Lincoln, not only for how he lived, but what he stood for, not only for the Americans of his time, but especially for those Americans yet to come. You know, I actually, myself, was very near the front. I had the great pleasure of transmitting much of the recent good news to the people just before the surrender. But, my friends, no part of the honor, either for plan or execution, belongs to me. It goes to General Grant, his brave men, his skillful officers. It is to them, it all belongs. I frankly think it would be hard to say whether anything has been more bravely or well done. Well, I was so impressed at all the sites where he visited, the enthusiasm, the excitement there was for Abraham Lincoln, and the high compliment to Fritz and the way he portrayed Lincoln was how many people after a performance would approach him and continue to ask him questions a half hour to an hour after the presentation. Abraham Lincoln have ever thought, conceived of a black man becoming president? Could Abraham Lincoln have ever conceived of a black man becoming president? Yes. In fact, he said many times, you know, every race, religion, and color um, should have the same opportunity. Now, this is something that Lincoln made very clear for an equal start. He didn't, he distinguished that from an equal end. He believed in what we would call a meritorious democracy, you know, that, that based on merit, everyone should be free to ascend as high as they can, go as far as they can. And what he brings to these performances is not only a knowledge 
based on the script, but also an ability to answer questions as Lincoln by even quoting him. And then when he breaks character, he can also answer questions about the whole history of Lincoln as well. Obviously, uh, Dewey Cole and Vanessa Torres, the two other people came on, did an outstanding job in the presentations, working with visitors before and after the shows as well. We were at Albany State House at the state capitol there in the war room and it, it literally depicts all the different wars that the United States have been a part of or participated in. It's a lot of pictures. <laughs> and um, I, I was there um, presenting my, my story and then at the end of the program a man came up to me and said that he was near tears when he heard what happened to my family and what happened to Cambodia. And, that was really, really moving for me um, to just have somebody acknowledge that. My story began 40 years ago when my parents survived genocide in Cambodia, separated from their families as young adults, forced into slave labor, and working 16 hours a day. It was awful. My story began a little over 100 years ago when my great-great-grandparents entered Texas from Mexico and Spain with two dimes in their pocket and working their hands to the bone as migrant workers, picking vegetables and fruit to be able to put food on their table, they strive for the American dream. People being, being able to connect their story to, um, to Dewey and I's story of our families and how, how our story began, um, which is something we did during the introduction, um, and, and being able to link it all together was interesting. And um, we had a lot of people coming up to us and thanking us for sharing our stories and for, um, and for being present and being that, that presence in the room. Well, my friends, I do wish to offer an opportunity. If anyone wishes to tender questions, I will be more than happy to accept and perhaps provide an answer to you. If you feel I'm a trifle hesitant in offering the first question, I'm happy to take the second one first. I, I just had a heightened sense of fulfillment of, of communication with people, partly because I could see everybody in the numbers. Um, being in you know, New Jersey, Ohio, uh, New York, uh, the, the number of state houses we were in, the, the elegance of a state house it just carries an a, a impact as well. To bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle, for his widow and his orphan. To do all which may achieve and cherish a just, a lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. I've been especially impressed that the National Park Service took the time and effort to commemorate the 150th anniversary of Lincoln's funeral by visiting places where the funerals were held. And so doing, it gave the Park Service an opportunity to reach out to new partners, new communities, and introduce them to the National Park Service, and also a critical moment in American history. This is a great example of something that uh, worked tremendously. It took a lot of time, um, but it, in the end of it, the payoff is tremendous, especially in those places that do not have a presence of Park Service. I love this part of my job where uh, I get to, to meet people of all walks of life, and I think that that's why I love this project so much, of being a part of this journey where Lincoln transcends uh, you know, all of our differences. Some of the cities in particular just stood out in their enthusiasm, and, and so uh, people still love Lincoln. Yeah, no doubt about it. I think the most important aspect is having us in the National Park Service look beyond our park boundaries to grasp the idea that we have a national history and as such we're not just limited to the sites that are part of the system but look at the nation as a whole. Over half the sites that we gave presentations in are not National Park Service sites yet we have a story that we've learned in the National Park Service we can take to the American people and those sites that hosted us were more than willing to work with us in telling that story.